Welcome to this video on how to prepare for the Elastic Certified Analyst exam. The goal of this course is to put you at ease as you think about and prepare for the certification exam. The primary audience for this exam are professionals who spend their day analyzing their Elastic Search data, typically using Kibana. In preparation for this exam, you have the option of taking the data analysis with Kibana course that we offer online, either virtually or on demand. It is a three-day course meant to prepare you for the Elastic Certified Analyst exam. However, while it's offered, it is not required that you take the course in order to attempt the exam. Anybody can attempt the exam at any time. First, let's begin by providing an overview of what to expect in the exam. You may have seen exams offered in the past that were typically multiple choice certifications. Our Elastic Certifications exams, however, are a little bit different because they are hands-on or performance-based. That means there are no multiple choice questions. Instead, in the two hours you will spend taking this exam, you will answer between 8 and 12 tasks. The questions themselves and even the number of questions may not be the same as there are different variants of the course. So, regardless, you should still have between 10 and 15 minutes to complete each task. Next, what does a task look like? Since this exam is hands-on, you may be given a Kibana instance and asked to open up Kibana and do something like build a dashboard or a map or run a machine learning job, for example. These tests are created to be challenging but also enjoyable to complete. In a moment, you will see a demonstration of the kinds of tasks you might encounter. To be fully prepared for the exam, you should read the objectives listed on the Elastic website. You can also take the course called Data Analysis with Kibana. Another great way to prepare is by working through the labs. Let's take a look at the site now. If you go to elastic.co front slash training, you'll find a link to certification. From there, you'll find the FAQ page, which you should read through thoroughly. The FAQ will answer some generic questions about the exam, like, which version of Elasticsearch is the exam referencing for the analyst exam? When we update the exam to a newer version, we'll give you a 30-day warning and you will be able to find that updated information on this FAQ page. Back on the original certification page, you can scroll down to find the link to sign up for the appropriate certification. Under Elastic Certified Analyst, you can click on Get Certified. On this page, you will see the link to add the exam to your cart. Scrolling down, you will find a description of the exam and an overview of what is covered in the exam. Also on this page, you'll find the exam objectives. Some of these objectives might include being able to define an index pattern, set the time filter in Kibana, create an area, line, pie, vertical bar, or horizontal bar visualization, define a metric, a gauge, or a table using time series visual builder, create a dashboard consisting of a collection of visualizations, or run a single metric, multimetric, or population metric machine learning job. To be fully prepared for the exam, you should be able to do all of these tasks. Once you are ready, you can purchase the exam. You'll see a link on the right-hand side of the exam showing the price of the exam. You will need to have an account with Elastic.co in order to add the exam to your shopping cart and check out. Exam prices are available on our website. Once purchased, you will receive an email with instructions for how to schedule the exam. This will include a link to redeem your invitation code. Clicking on that redemption code will actually take you to a different website called trueability.com where you will choose your day and time from 1 to 365 days in advance. Once you schedule, you will be brought to the TrueAbility candidate portal where you will see any exams you were scheduled for. This is where you can update your examity profile, start your exam, or reschedule an exam. You should update your Examity profile before starting an exam. Examity will list out what is required for you to take your exam. This includes updating your time zone. Remember, a proctor is assigned to the exam, so a time zone is important for scheduling the proctor. Before you begin, Examity also requires you to upload a government-issued photo ID, create security questions, and update personal information. You should also click on the link to check computer requirements to make sure that your setup will work for the exam. This will test your webcam, microphone, operating system, browser, and internet speed. If you are using a VPN, you should also connect prior to running this test. 
Next, you need to have your workspace prepared prior to taking the test. You need to take the test alone, without anyone else in the room. Your workspace needs to be clear of all materials, including notes, papers, or writing utensils. You should also not have a phone out, nor be wearing headphones. You also cannot be wearing a smartwatch during the exam. You should make sure your computer is connected to a power source, so you are able to complete the exam without having to interrupt a plug-in. You can only have one monitor in use during the exam. While you can have a laptop plugged into an external monitor, you cannot have your laptop open at the same time, creating multiple screens. All webcams, speakers, and microphones must be kept on for the entire exam. There should be no leaving your seat or talking during the exam, and finally, the proctor needs to be able to see you the entire time. All of these rules are in place to maintain the integrity of the test. Here are a few additional instructions to follow during the test. Do not ask the proctor questions about the exam content or Elastic software. They are not familiar with either. You will be provided one 10-minute break that is included in your test time. You may have a glass of water on the desk. You can take the exam if your ID is not in Western characters, but the photo on the ID needs to be matched with the person taking the exam. Once the exam is started, you cannot reschedule. If you begin the exam and feel that there is a technical issue with Elasticsearch, you can end the exam and email certification at elastic.co to have the issue reviewed and potentially receive a free retake. Finally, and this is important, individuals taking the exam are responsible for keeping track of their own time. Proctors may give a 30-minute or 15-minute warning, but you should mark down when you start and keep track of how much time you have left which can be done inside the test environment. To reiterate, exam prices are available on our website. If you do not pass or are asked to stop, you will need to pay to take the exam again. If you have a standard training subscription, you receive two free exam attempts. If you have purchased a professional training subscription, you receive four free exam attempts. These free attempts can be used for different exams or multiple tries on the same exam whatever works for you. Now, let's take a look at what the exam itself looks like. When you first open the exam environment, the browser will take up the whole screen and you will see the initial instructions and a Start Assessment button. You can minimize the browser screen to be able to see your desktop and the icons available, but you will notice that the exam instructions are not accessible yet. At this point, the timer for the exam has started. Everything up to this point, including all of the interaction with the proctor, applies to your two hours. This is when the exam starts. When you read the environment overview, it tells you how many tasks are on the exam. It explains that tasks are not graded as right or wrong. You can earn partial credit for tasks, so please attempt all tasks. Also, you can go back and forth between tasks. You do not have to answer tasks in order, although you can decide to do that. How you approach the tasks is completely up to you. You will also notice the bullet that begins with the word important. This instruction lets you know that you need to define index patterns and on which field. It also tells you which environment you are in. In this example, the environment is Linux. You can also see that you may access Kibana and are given a link for how to do that. To see the questions, you will click Start Assessment. At this point, the exam's instructions and the tasks will become available on the left-hand side of the screen. You can choose to read through all of the tasks first or you can just start with Task 1 and just go through linearly. For this demonstration, we'll show you three questions. You can see here the first question is worth 10 points and reads. There are 17 unique values of the airline field in the flights index. The W in airline has the highest percentage of flights with 18.66%, followed by AA with 13.33% and DL with 12.63%. Create a single pie chart that displays the percentage of flights flown by each of the 17 airlines. Save the visualization to a dashboard named Task 1. When you first start to create your dashboard, you remember that the instructions said you needed to create an index pattern. So, we'll start from there. It asked us to name it Flight Asterisk and to use the flight date as the field for the timestamp. You can now go to the dashboard and add a visualization. There are often multiple ways of doing the same task. We can create a pie graph from within Kibana, but if you know how to use Lens, you can also create it that way. We can pick the dates that you need, use the airline field, and choose the pie chart graph. You remember the detail that you need to use the top 17 values, which are actually all of the values. You also have to save the dashboard, 
so remember in the task that you need to enter the task with the proper name. Technically your task is done, but you can save this visualization to the library if you want to. There you go you've received all 10 points. But if you don't feel comfortable with Lens, you can create a pie graph the old-fashioned way using the flight's asterisk data and create a terms aggregation with the airline field. This is also a perfectly reasonable way to solve the problem and would also give you all 10 points. The how doesn't matter, the fact that you get the right answer does. It is very important to note, here, though, that the way you name your objects is crucial to you getting credit. The instructions clearly said to name your dashboard, task 1. The initial grading of the exam is done with a script, so the grading software is looking for a dashboard called task 1. If you name it something different, you will get no credit for a perfectly correctly answered question. Next, let's skip over to task 3 and come back to task 2 in a minute. For task 3, we're being asked to create a machine learning job that satisfies certain requirements. For this, I will go to machine learning, create our job, choose a single metric, choose our time range, and pick our metric and bucket span. Create the job ID with the name specified in the instructions. Create the job and view your results. You can now answer the question based on the machine learning job you created, which was to identify the largest anomaly. Make sure to enter the date in the correct format. I click on Save Progress and the icon next to the task changes to a save icon. If you try to save progress before answering the question, the exam will warn you that you cannot. But you can always skip to the next question and come back later. The exams are created like an open world game where you really can walk through it any way you want. We saved task 2 for last because this question deals with a map, so you may need to do things a little differently. Maybe you aren't great with maps. One of the icons on the desktop is Elastic Documentation and you can search through the documentation to jog your memory. This is the only way you can search your documentation. In a live testing environment, Google is blocked, so you cannot search for any answers outside of what is available to you. If you try to open another tab and look for Google somewhere else, you will get flagged by the proctor. Do not leave this view once you've started the exam or you run the risk of being disqualified. One site that is not blocked is deeple.com in case you need documentation translated. Back to the task, we are building a map with the flights index for North America to display the number of flights that originate from each U.S. state for the month of February, 2020. For this example, the easiest way to do this is to choose the Coropleth and pick U.S. states choose the index pattern, and select the origin state. Once the map is generated, we can use that map visualization to answer the question asked in task 2. Once again, make sure you save the visualization with the right name. So, for this, you needed to save the map, add it to a dashboard, and save it with the right name. Remember, as an end user, this may not be the prettiest or most appealing visualization. But for the certification exam, the important thing is, does it answer the question correctly? This map is a good example of not very pretty, but does exactly what it is supposed to do. A final point is to reiterate that you should never leave a question unanswered. Recall, you get partial credit for answers. Maybe on that last question you didn't remember that you needed to use a choropleth, but maybe the other parts of the map were correct. You'd be leaving points on the table if you skipped the question altogether. When you are finished with all of your tasks, before you end the exam, click on Assessment Review. This is a check to make sure you have completed everything satisfactorily. You will see some tasks are marked as viewed, some as response saved, and some no response. Obviously, the no response items require you to go back and answer. The response saved means that you entered a response. But whenever a task requires that you create something in the system, like a dashboard or visualization for example, the status would be listed as viewed. When you are finished, you can tell the proctor you are finished with the test and then click on the complete assessment button, where you are then knocked out of the exam and returned to the candidate portal. Some test takers may have some restrictions based on the country they are taking the exam from and require a VPN to log in. This is not restricted. Just make sure to connect to your VPN before starting the exam and test it out in the examity profile page. Test takers often ask how the exam is graded. The answer is that it is done in two phases. First, there are automatic scripts that attempt to grade the exam. 
But then, a set of human eyes will review the test to determine if there was a logistical error that prevented the answer from being scored, or perhaps a different way of getting to the answer than was programmed into the scripts. Either way, this human component can give partial credit when the automatic grading is too black and white. How many points do you need to pass the exam? There are many variants of each exam and each of those variants have a different number of points and a different passing score. The best advice is to attempt every single question and try to get as many points for each answer as possible. It takes roughly three business days to get the results of the exam back. When you pass the exam, you will be alerted by email and be able to view your certification on a site called Credible. You see here your certificate of completion as well as a depiction of the coin slash stickers you will receive to designate that you've passed the Elastic Certified Analyst exam. From that page, you can also share your credential via your social networks like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or WhatsApp. In order to be part of the Certified Professionals group on LinkedIn, you need to share your credential there. Once you've passed, you may wonder how long your certification is good for. The answer is that it is good for two years, but you can extend the life of the certification by passing other certifications exams. There are three exams currently in addition to the Analyst Exam the Elastic Certified Engineer and the Elastic Certified Observability Engineer. For each exam that you pass, you can add two additional years to your certification expiration. If you have more questions, you can always visit the certification FAQ page at elastic.co front slash training front slash certification front slash fact site. Or if you can't find your answer there, you can email certification at elastic.co with your question. Thank you for reviewing this video on what to expect for the Elastic Certified Analyst exam. Good luck on your testing!